Hey y'all. Hey. Lord, y'all look young. <laughs> oh, Mar been up too? Martha keeps talking about your sweet potato pie. She I'm wants hungry. some off the bed. <laughs> yeah, well, I got it oh. boiling. I just got to throw it together and we got some coals to bake. Uh, oh, it's good to you see you. Good. <laughs> I'm telling you, get me back there and get Mom. me up. I'm talking hug you and bend over. Hey, go on. Go on, dress on my It's good to see you. Hey, Lenimal. Y'all gonna get to stay for supper, ain't you? Yeah. I hope so. We're gonna. <laughs> I, hope we, I hope we can teach her how to cook something. You know, hey, <laughs> so you. That little gal likes to eat. Now she's pretty <laughs> enough. She ain't got to cook. You can take her out and buy her something. <laughs> you know, they're pretty ones. You don't feed them ugly ones at the store. <laughs> you don't live up, boy. Wait a minute. What you got there? A little handmade guitar. Well, oh, that's nice. My it, neighbor made. Your neighbor made that. Yeah. That's yeah. really nice. And uh, he used to go to the North Carolina State Fair and made these and sell them. Oh. And he gave me this one, and I found it in my bedroom the other night. So I wanted to give it to one of my best friends. Aww. Oh, thank you very much, Lena Bell. That's sweet. You're welcome. Thank you kindly. I really appreciate that. That's pretty cool. That looks That's like awesome. a real endorsement. Awesome. <laughs> looks like That's a real awesome. awesome. Yeah, it's about your size. Well, this <laughs> Martha, this is so I can play a little bit of music. <laughs> just, just a little music. Oh, that's cool, though. That's nice. Lindemann. Well, how long y'all going to get to stay now? We're going to play all night. Lord have <laughs> mercy, we laying out with the dry cows tonight, young. Y'all, come on. We're going to feed you up on chicken and dumplings and sweet potato pie. Oh, well, that sounds do. awesome. We got the chicken a hanging and fixing to put the pie in the hole. All right, I'm ready oh, for the that's, pie. Oh, that's great. That's great. Awesome. I'm hungry. <laughs> My name is Matt Kinman, and the name of the show is The Patchwork of America. To me, when I think of patchwork, I think of a quilt. And I think of an old person sitting there at night around a fire, and they're sitting there sewing, and they're telling tales, they're talking about people. Maybe someone's over there cooking something in the fire or cooking something on the stove, and they're telling something that maybe what they did when they was a kid and growing up and usually they're teaching some young person there how to sew and put things together and it's a way of passing something on but also educating somebody about life and the way things are 
and the way things do work in life. I think the main thing that's being lost with modern technology is the common thing of being able to really associate with people and to talk to people and to listen. You got in a day of time now where everybody's walking around with two thumbs out here in front of them and they don't even see where they're going and they run into people. There's a wonder they don't even walk off without in, the, in the traffic and get run over. And you go out oh, in a busy city and you'll see about a whole bunch of them just walking up and down the streets doing like this. They walk by people, they don't even talk to them. People used to walk by and they still do. You go to a small town, people walk by and they say, Hi, how you doing? Beautiful day. banjos, fiddles, guitars, but my main preference is stuff that is handmade. Like you find a handmade banjo that's old, there ain't but one of them, there ain't another. There ain't another. And there's a guy that's here there and didn't have a lot of money and he wanted it and he made it. And it's lasted all this time and usually there'll be really grooves dug down in there and man, that's exciting to find something like that. Like I had a friend named Houston Harrison made flintlock rifles of the most exquisite artisan work that you've ever seen in your life. And when I say he made a gun, he made every piece of it. He made the locks, he made the barrel, he made everything that you see. The most exquisite thing ever. And they're actually going to put some of his work on display at the Tennessee State Museum here in Nashville, Tennessee. This is my gun room where I keep all my, my guns and my hardware. But I've always fooled with guns and firearms and hunted with them. I like to shoot pistols, single action Colts and stuff like that. 
These are my Scottish all steel pistols. I built these pistols a number of years back. And they exactly like the, the Scottish all steel pistols that was used in Scotland and Ireland. They're, they're real pistols. You can cock them and I've shot them both. This is a typical Hawking style rifle. I've built four or five of them. There's at least 500 hours in, 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 of work in a rifle like that. How many guns do you reckon you've built in your years? Not very time? many, not over 35, 40 maybe. I made every piece of this rifle. I made it 40 years ago. I shot this rifle a lot, hunted with it. It's my favorite rifle, really. This is a powder horn, it's got powder in it. And this is a charger right here, it holds about 60 grains of powder. So you fill up your charger with black powder. Now you pour it in the barrel. Now you put the ball in the mouth of the muzzle and you get it started in with your ball starter. I've got to ram it all the way down. This is a ramrod. All right, I've got it rammed down to the bottom of the charge. Now, you have to prime the lock. You simply close the frizzing. When you cock it and pull the cock with the flint in it, the, flip, the hammer comes down, knocks the frizzing open, and throws a shower of sparks, and ignites the powder in the pan and sets off the main charge. Today, we're gonna go visit a friend of mine, Audrey Hasham, White Top Mountain, Virginia. Her dad was a real famous fiddle maker. His name was Albert Hash. Audrey's carried on the traditions. Let's see if we can learn to put a fiddle together. Hey, whoa, 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 are we, Martha? Grayson County, Virginia, right up White Top Mountain. Real nice up here. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and my uncle Albert Hash, was a, a fiddler and a fiddle maker, and you met my cousin Audrey. Well, Audrey, I, we come up here, up here on White Top and today, and say you make fiddles, and you've been making fiddles a long time. A little 42 years, I guess. Learned from your daddy, didn't you? When I was born, he paid for me with a fiddle. We lived so far back up, it's what they call Fees Ridge, that he had to put Mama on a sled to get her to where someone had a car to take him 20 miles to Jefferson so she could have me. And he always told me, he said, boy, I got cheated. <laughs> Take a good fiddle for a scrawny little runt like you. <laughs> when I was just a tiny little girl, maybe three years old, I remember standing by the window watching my dad make a fiddle. I mean, he'd take his board, I mean, it's just plank. And he would work and work and work on it until he had the prettiest fiddle you've ever seen. Mm -hmm. And I thought, now, if I ever do get any kind of a chance, I'm going to do that. But his work, I've, I've never seen anything to compare with. No, he made some I beautiful mean. stuff, all them carved up heads and things. Oh, and yeah. His little tails he'd put in there. <laughs> oh, gosh, he's just a sight. But you're still making a lot of fiddles and a lot of people's playing your fiddles today. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lots of people, and you're responsible for getting a lot of the younger ones building fiddles again. That's what pleases me so, is to pass it along to someone who will be dedicated to it. I just growed up around old stuff all my life and hanging out with folks and older folks all my life. Grew up as a little kid, we grew up on ranches out in the southwest, and I was about 10, 11 years old, my dad moved us back east, and I've still been hanging out around the same kind of folks all my life, all over Appalachian Mountains and all over the country because I got into playing music and that allowed me to go a lot of places and meet a lot of different folks and I always congregated towards the folks that had common interest. Well, we've been playing music together for years. I've been known with Martha a long time and and we've been around fiddlers conventions and different kind of music events we go to, uh, molasses making, apple butter makings, and we uh, 
always play music because any time events like that going on, if the church is making apple butter, they want music. And they, most of the people prefer where we live, the old time mountain music, because that's the kind of music that they come up around there and they dance to it. And uh, it's a lot different than your honky tonk and your western swing, but <laughs> it's the old mountain type dancing and it's kind of brought us all together. The name of the show is The Patchwork of America because I see it as just like this quilt where you have today. This quilt's probably well over 100 years old. It could be 200 years old. But each thing on this quilt represents somebody, some place. You know, of what's been going on somewhere on here is somebody's hands. And at one time, we ought to find it here, it was probably some <laughs> little kid Long time ago, they laid their hand up there and their grandma traced it out and then marked it. And that's somebody that's probably been long dead that was this little kid. This is probably 150, 200 years old, this quilt. And to see that, it makes you wonder, what did this person learn? Where did this person go? Where did they come from? Well, by this kind of show, the patchwork of America, we are exposed to these people that are passing on things. They're living history. They're our past, they're our future. And that's also who we are as American people. And that's what it represents to me. Matt, we've got these finally cooled after a couple of hours. So now we need to mortise them. I've got the three slots mortised out. It'll be for our back slats. We need to get our hose bored now. We'll use the drill press and drill our holes for our rounds. Just clean this one up and we'll put them together then. All right then, let's see what we get. You used to have to scrape these, didn't you? Yeah, we did. We used to take a pocket knife and just uh, all these marks and, and of course boiling it gets it dirty too and just we used to just have to scrape it. Take a long time to do that. Oh yeah. Now thank God we got the sanders. We're going to have to put our back slats in, but first we'll saw them off and sand them up. Let's drive these back slats in here now. Go ahead and put a little glue in here. And they did have glue back years and years and years ago. Oh yeah, old hide glue. That sticks to you, ain't nothing getting it off. <laughs> A pocket knife is good for a lot of things. Most important thing a man can carry. You wonder who taught who on making chairs, you know, because I know that my daddy and my grandpa taught me a whole lot, you know, about making chairs, but there's no better teacher than experience. You do learn a whole lot on your own while making them. And another thing, you always, when you're making a chair, if this chair is ordered and you've seen that person here and talked to this person, you're always thinking about that person when you're making that chair. Each person has a different personality and you can kind of put that personality into that chair. In my eyes, it will be. Maybe not, you know, in theirs, but it is mine. I think that's kind of neat. Looks good, Mark. Thank you. A lot of these things are old, old things. I think they're also, um, they're also very much alive. Like if you go to the mountains, you're gonna find like Lots of fiddle players that are all the way from up in their you know nineties all the way to teenagers you know ten, you know ten years old and you know by videoing these days you know even you know or having things on YouTube things like that I mean people see and are exposed to people they might not have ever heard of or seen it before you know without going there. What you gonna make today, John? We might try to make some change. Head on inside, it look dark in here. Well, you get that fire going, it'll light it up. Yeah. Now I got a handmade brick and a, a copper hood on it right here, sheet copper. And then the stove pipe just goes right out the roof there. Of course, got the bellows up overhead here. Got the charcoal set up there on the wood shavings, and I always keep my matches up here in my hat when I'm blacksmithing. That's what the old timers did. And, uh, should take right off there, those there dry go. wood shavings. Let that catch real good, and I'll start pumping air into that. Mm 
feel like I was born in the wrong time and I've always been attached to the simpler way of life. Just live the best way that I know how. It's a peacefulness. It's, uh, it gets to your heart, you know. It's a lot of hard work, but it's, uh, it's so worth it. Unfortunately, uh, working at uh, a museum or a historical site, you're not going to make a, a lot of money. <laughs> but uh, no. it's really a, uh, a treasure, though, to, to be able to do something like this. You got to know how to take care of yourself. That's right. Back in the old days, but they was always a blacksmith somewhere around. They could trade it out for something mm -hmm. else they knew. Sure. And those are hot biscuits right there now. A good size chain. When I listen to music, you know, sometimes I listen to records, sometimes I listen to CDs, sometimes I listen to stuff online, MP3s, anything. You know, I, I listen to kind of a little bit of all of it. Well, I don't listen to it. I don't even know what an MP3 is, <laughs> first off. But I'll, I'll turn, pull the turntable out and pull, pull the record out because I like to hear a good record. And if I'm in the old Mercury, I still got eight tracks. I still play the old eight track. Anyway, them CDs don't do much for me, even though I've made them and sold them, but they don't do much for me. But they just ain't got the same feel as an old record. When I am traveling, I play music for a living. I play traditional Appalachian Mountain music. I also play honky-tonk music. I play with a fellow named Luke Bell. And Believe it or not, and I'll tell them myself, I do play something a little modern. I play electric guitar. Well, I like it. I was against electric guitar for many, many years. And then I got one, and got to fooling around with it, and I like rockabilly music and surf music, and I got to playing that. And I was like, this ain't too bad, but I still like my old stuff where I can come out and sit on the old porch and pull my guitar out and our banjo and the fiddle, and it ain't gotta have nothing. You sit there, play under a tree, and have a great time with whoever comes up. That's your favorite, ain't it, Martha? Mm-hmm. I don't want to ask mine. Yeah. Stole this yard bird. Anybody knows a stole bird well. better than, <laughs> than a tame bird. Yeah, free bird and you didn't get caught. <laughs> <laughs> Is that in there? Yep. Now okay. Matt's gonna Matt, now you know how since we ain't got a lighter not you pick this you pick this lantern up a little. Don't hold it over the pot so you don't get right. kerosene in there. But you hold it, come on high up. All right, like so y'all can see in the pot good now what's over there. Now we fix and set it over here and go to serving it. This here is no Tennessee recipe, y'all, and I got it off an old gal that's still kicking, and uh, I ain't never used another one since then. You boil your chicken, you take an amount of broth that you know will be enough, and you chill it dead cold. You mix all-purpose flour. I like white lily. It's a good in the fireplace over the fire outside kind of flour. You mix it a little at a time. Liquid first, dry later on a dumpling. Don't put your dry first and get a water mess, you know, and think you're gonna make a dumpling out of it. But when it gets tender enough, when it's tender, you quit. You don't roll it much. You don't overhandle or pat that dumpling. If you made mud pies, you'll have a problem with that. But if you pet a man too much, he gets tough, just like that dumpling. If you don't over pet a man, you don't over pet a dumpling. And I'm, I'm dead serious. All right, this young one dropped every one of these dumplings. I roll them, I put a little bit of liquid, put flour, one batch at a time. Roll them, cut them, put them on a floured plate. She can't put them in there a handful at a time. You pick them up and you drop them. She did awesome good for a kid her age. Now, if you get one kind of stuck together, that's all right. But uh, it, it's uh, the seasoning is Morton's Nature Seasoning, Blue Top. They need to send us some money, don't they? <laughs> We got Everglades seasoning in there. Now when y'all get you some, I don't put a ton of it, but it's got a taste. I like a bunch of that blue top stuff. 
If y'all like a bunch of it, y'all get after it like a biting sow or hog, whatever. <laughs> Boy hog, be all right. But uh, you cook it slow, you don't get in a hurry. When you drop them, what did I tell you, baby, that we have to have in that pot? Do we have beads around it, kind of like a necklace, a little bubbles where the broth touches the iron? It's got to be moving a little, but not no big old rolling boil. It's boiling easy. You want a, like a little necklace of beads where the broth touches the pot. Now this you know, pot helps because it's a hated pot. How old is that? Hey, it, it, it could be 200. Wow. It's 100 for dead sure, but uh, I've never looked it up, but the quality of the metal tells me uh, what it is. It's probably early 1800s. Have you had it long? Time? I've had it about 20 years, wow. something like that. Now, my niece dropped it when we were working in North Carolina and busted that chunk out of it, oh. and she looked at me like a run-over dog. She <laughs> said, oh, Mom, I broke your pot. I said, baby, it's just a pot, but you better come up with a story. Ha, 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 ha.